Hello, this is Gallifreyan Jedi speaking, and I would like to welcome you to my YouTube channel. And I would like to start out today by apologizing for my long absence since my last video that I made about over a month ago, which was on the topic of Doctor Who mythology, the theories on time travel. I made that video a little over a month ago prior to going to Celebration in Anaheim, California, which, ironically, that will be today's topic. Um, for today's blog. Uh, the, the title which I'm giving today's, uh, for today's blog will be, my, will be titled My Experience and Assessment of Celebration Anaheim. And uh, just to give you a little bit of background, the reason why I call it Celebration Anaheim, they've, uh, they've decided to change instead of since the time they did some from Celebration 1 all the way to Celebration 6, they stopped the number system and they're just calling it. So they just called this Celebration is celebration at Anaheim, but I, you know, I'll refer to it as Star Wars Celebration in Anaheim, California. But I will be talking about uh, today for my topic. I will be talking about my experience and assessment um, of my, you know, of my experiences over my time at Celebration in Anaheim. And I apologize. I know this is coming a month, a little over a month late, because this was a month ago that this convention took place around the same time last month in April uh, that this convention took place. So it's been over a month since I did actually uh, am tackling, since I went to the convention and now that I'm actually tackling this topic, this issue. Uh, so I do apologize for that. I mean, after coming back from California, uh, there's a lot of things in my personal life and I wasn't feeling too well with a little bit of illness and, you know, other things that slowed me down that um, I didn't get to this blog and didn't get to these things right away for my YouTube channel, although I was trying to update my YouTube channel and respond to people's comments, I wasn't really getting back to um, making my videos, which I do now before this the, before the information and the topic actually becomes too irrelevant, I did want to tackle this topic uh, to inform my viewers of my experience and what I thought about Celebration uh, this year and my assessment of it. Uh, I did want to deal with that as I get back to the old grind of making my videos. Now I know that uh, prior, last month prior when I made my previous video on the Doctor Who mythology, I did promise saying that my next topic for my next blog will be a Star Wars mythology on does the Earth exist in the Star Wars universe. And I still have that planned. I'm still working on uh, the notes and information for that blog. I've got a lot of interesting stuff. You're going to want to see that. Uh, but I do apologize. I'm going to have to, I mean, I had planned that for the month of May to create that and post that for the month of May. Unfortunately, uh, because I've been slow at getting back to making my videos and because I wanted to do today's topic or this month's topic, on celebration in Anaheim, so the month of May will be uh, the topic. Will um, for this month's blog will be on the topic of celebration in Anaheim. Um, I'm going to have to push the uh, topic of the Star Wars mythology on does the Earth exist in the Star Wars uh, Star Wars universe. I'm going to have to push that topic off for June. So I apologize for those uh, of you who were looking forward towards that topic for the month of May. But do not worry. For I do tentatively have planned for the month of June that will definitely be my topic for the month of June. But for now, for this month, I want to cover uh, again the topic of um, sharing my experiences of my trip to California and giving my assessment of uh, the Star Wars celebration in Anaheim. Now I'm going to be covering. Now let, let me give you a bit of background. Let me back up a little bit so you understand. I'm going to be using. Major, majority of my pic, majority of the pictures that are going to go for this blog, I'm going to try to use uh, the ones that I took with my cell phone while I was out in California. Uh, so, um, and I'm still working on that, downloading those to my computer so I can use that for this blog. But I'm working right now on sharing the information about Celebration too. Also, too, because I will be using my own pictures. The only reason why I wanted to share that and emphasize that, which I almost forgot, is because you might notice that some of the topics that I talk about in the conventions, like the panels, 
I'm not going to have actual pictures of the panels just because of um, some of them they don't want you to take too many pictures and I don't know about the uh, legality of those you know sharing those pictures online so some of my pictures that I might be sharing when I'm talking about the information might not go so I you know just bear with me and be patient you know go with the uh, flow of this video as I share share you know what, what pictures that you do see or, or do present as I'm sharing the information it might not go hand in hand so I just want to share that up front now what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be going through each day of my from the time I I went uh, my time that I went to California was from uh, I left on April 13th uh, 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 a Monday April 13th and I came home on Monday April 20th of 2015 those were the dates that I uh, spent in California and the reason why now the actual convention took place from Thursday April 16th to Sunday April 19th so the reason why I have those extended dates is because of those extended time those extended days that I actually was in California which I do want to share and for significant reasons as you will see but anyway uh, to get going I just want to uh, oh by the way too um, I have some notes here an outline which I'm going but I'm going to do this a uh, blog more more or less improv so I do ask to be patient especially those who sometimes um, get frustrated if I uh, stutter or something like that but I'm, I'm trying to do my best and I feel like this this doing this blog rather than a script is easier or more practical for me to do it improv because I am sharing my experiences so anyway just wanted to share those things before I get headed into this blog but anyway like I said I left on um, a Monday, April 13th, uh, flew in, had a layover in uh, Phoenix, Arizona, but uh, flew into uh, LAX airport in Los Angeles and took a, a relatively, it was relatively fair, air, um, an air flight long, you know, six, seven hours or so. But when I got into Los Angeles, I got a shuttle bus, took me to Anaheim and checked into my motel. That's fine. So. What I did on the first day, on Tuesday, April 14th, and this is the reason why I went early, is I, I went to Disneyland because in Anaheim, right around the corner uh, from where I was staying at, which was the Marriott, which the Marriott Hotel was right across from the, uh, the Hilton Hotel and also uh, the uh, convention center, the Anaheim Convention Center where the convention took place. But right around the corner, not, about maybe about three or four miles right around the corner, was um, Disneyland, uh, it, it, the original park, and I wanted to go there because that is the original park before they built Disney, actually before they built Disney World in Orlando, that was the original park that Walt Disney built in the 50s. And I had always wanted to go there, I wanted to visit that to see what that was like. And it was quite, a, it was quite an experience, it was interesting. It, was, it wasn't as exciting as some of the bigger parks with the big coasters. But it was nice, and it was quaint, you know, uh, you know because it had a, it was felt very much like what Walt Disney had, even though all the attractions and the rides were up to date. It felt very much uh, the kind of spirit that Walt Disney had built originally built back in the 50s with his the original park. So I had went there, and uh, had an inter interest had an interesting day. Uh, it, the um, I found the one thing I found about the park that was interesting is that they have a train that you get on, and the train takes you around to the whole park. And 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 it said, you know, there, if you're familiar with some, how the way some of these parks they have, they have different sections with different themes, as most um, uh, attraction park or most most of these kinds of park theme parks have. And uh, you don't have to walk; you can walk to them, but you don't have to walk to them. You can get actually on the train. And take a train ride to each of these um, parts of the parts of the park, and each had a theme. Like one theme was, uh, you know, de dedicated to the old west, and they had rides and shows to the old west. And one of them was towards magic. You know, they had the magic king, you know, magic kingdom, and the magic, you know, and uh, they had one it, it, one on adventure land, you, you, you know, uh, um, adventure land, which the interesting enough, they had an Indiana Jones ride, which I was dying to ride which I would love to have going on.
but they shut for some reason there was mechanical problems they shut the ride down for the whole day I kept going everybody kept coming back every couple of hours to see they got and they haven't got it up so I totally missed and I, I was disappointed because I missed going on that that ride that Indiana Jones ride but the thing that made it worth is that they had one of the one of the sections was f the future land and that's all the futuristic stuff that's uh from for most of you who are familiar that's where they have space mountain you know uh, uh the, the big I, I remember from a kid being so infamous space mountain being so infamous where you know people who had a weak heart weren't supposed to go on because it was supposed to be a roller coaster and which it was like a roller coaster very fast ride going in the dark you can't see anything you're just you're just essentially in the dark um, but, uh, and that was fun. I went on that, I went on Space Mountain. That was interesting, but it wasn't as scary. I mean, I guess because I'm so used to some of the biggest coasters and that's the fine coaster. I mean, I've been on some of the greatest coasters on the East Coast. So, you know, it's sort of like some of these other ones that were so infamous growing up have sort of been like the letdown, almost like the Loch Ness Monster. Went on the Loch Ness Monster, but that was... Of recent, so I've been on some of these bigger coasters, so it was sort of like wasn't as death defying and you know, as as, uh, as it was, uh, you know, what it was cracked up to be when I was growing up. But that was okay, it was still a fun ride. I mean, the uh, at the uh, Space Mountain was still a fun ride. But what was what was the big attraction was Star Tours. Now, Star Tours was Star Wars essentially, and that was just outstanding it was just so it was extremely fun i had i, I love that uh, i love that ride so much went on it twice and if i had time i probably would have gone on it more times uh but it was just outstanding of a, a, a ride a, 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 outstanding of a ride uh you go in and it gives you that star wars feel you know you see the charts up there almost like what you would see in a star wars movie of, of the different planets and and the language it was written in, and you know, and and you're going past, and you, 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 you and then you're going past droids. I mean, they have uh, up there uh, a, a model of the uh, li uh, uh, live model of the Star Tours ship ride that's there, with R2, a R2 unit, and you have C3PO talking to R2D2 and looking down upon the crowd, and then you've got, and you see all sorts of uh, astro droids as you're going along, and then you actually have. Um, uh, mechanical droids and other kinds of droids that are actually talking to you saying what is your destination where do you want to go it looks like it's it's really like that live feel like like these droids are actually talking to you before you actually get on the ride get on the store tours ride now when you actually get on the store tours ride it's what you do is you have 3d glasses so it gives you 3d glasses and if you're familiar with other rides they have like the back to the future ride they had at universal yeah, the ride actually moves, but the 3D glasses make you feel like you're actually in a scene. And it, and it gives you that feel like you're actually going into hyperspace and coming out and going and, and going to visiting different planets. But it has different scenes, both from the prequel trilogy and the original trilogy. Like, one scene might take you to the planet Hoth during the Battle of Hoth and then Park Strikes Back. And then another scene might take you to Kashyyyk from Episode 3, you know, um, Revenge of the Sith. Where um, you had the bat the battle of Kashyyyk with the uh, with the clone troopers and the uh, droids and stuff stuff like that. It was just out of this world. I I loved it. I that was probably my favorite ride of the whole thing. And of course, I stayed there until the uh, to see the uh, to closing to, to see the, um, the 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 fireworks show. That was fun. But that was essentially my day at at Disneyland. Now on Wednesday, of April fifteenth. Um, that was my day of rest. The reason why I, had, I, I gave that a day of rest is because when I went to Celebration at 6 but back in 2012, which was the last Celebration, the last two Celebration conventions, Celebration 5 and Celebration 6 were in Orlando, Florida, which I went to both of them. But when I went to uh, Celebration 6 back in 2012, the day before the convention, I went to Universal Studios uh, with um, because they, ha they had the uh, new Harry... Potter ride. They had the new Harry Potter uh, event thing, the the big thing that was there, and I had to see that. I've heard that, heard all about that. And had to go see. So I spent the day at Universal Studios that day, day before the convention, and oh, I was tired. When I got back, I was wiped out. My feet were hurting, and the next thing you know, the convention began, and I was extremely wiped out. Now, 
so I decided this time around, because I wanted to go to Disneyland, I'd give myself a day of rest so I can have completely just chill out for the whole day, lie around, watch movies, hang out the pool, whatever, which, uh, which I did. And that helped, but, um, you know, unfortunately, uh, it didn't fully help. I mean, I, I, mean I, I, I didn't have as many problems with my feet as I did when I was down in Orlando. So my, my legs and my feet got a lot of rest, but my allergies were bothering me terribly because, um, because of the extreme droughts. See, right now, California is an extreme drought. They have one of the worst droughts they've had in, in their entire history. And the pollen was just, you know, just a flood of pollen. And I'm a terribly allergic, so that was making me feel sick, very sick. And then I think on top of that, somewhere along the line, I got a virus. I, got, I caught a virus. So I was starting to feel like a cold on top of that. So that made me feel worse. So <laughs> it was kind of ironic because I felt like even though I had that day of rest, I was still feeling very much under the weather before I went to the convention. That's why I think the next celebration convention, I'll just go for the convention. If I'm going to go to Disney World or Disneyland or Universal Studios or some kind of theme park, that's what I'll do. I'll go on vacation just to go to the theme parks. But if I'm going to a um, celebration convention, then that then that's the only thing I will do. Um, but anyway, during that day of rest, um, in the afternoon, they, because they were setting up and like I said, I'm, I was only uh, 30, you know, only a minute away walking distance from the uh, convention center uh, from my hotel. So I walked over while they were getting ready, and um, I wanted to get a program guide, you know, so to, to look at all the uh, the panels and choose which ahead of time which ones I really wanted to go to. And uh, so um, I I was able to get a program guide. Uh, thank heaven. So. Uh, talked one guy into giving, giving me an early copy of it, which he wasn't supposed to do, but I was appreciative that he did because it was very helpful. But then what they had, ironically, is uh, uh, while I was, after I got my program guide, I started to notice some people were asking if uh, they can get in, and they said, no, come back at 6. So I thought, I thought that what they were doing is they were going to allow some people to come in early and see what the setting up. And I said, oh, I would love to see that. I would love to see who's setting up what and chit-chat with people or whatever. Uh, but they uh, kicked me out. They got security in there, and they noticed that I wasn't one of the workers, or wasn't one of the people who were setting up for the convention. So they kicked, they clearly kicked me out. Um, I mean, part of it I can understand why, but another part of it I feel like you know that uh, they just, you know, you know, I wasn't there to create problems. But I guess everybody can say that. But uh, anyway, in spite of the fact that I didn't like being you know, treated as, you know, as an invader, I, I'm being thrown out, and I mean, I can understand part, partially why they did that. But anyway, I was thrown out early. But what I found out, interesting enough, what I found out is the guy who came there who was lining up, I assumed that they were going to start letting people in at 6 o'clock. So I asked, I asked uh, security, he says, are you letting people in early just to see the setup? And they said, no, no. So what is, what are you telling people to come back at 6 o'clock? He says, oh, they're lining up because the first thing in the morning, first thing Thursday morning, they were going to have the big panel, the main panel, with Kathleen Kennedy and J.J. Abrams on uh, Episode 7, The Force Awakens. And they were going to unveil the second trailer, the second teaser trailer. And that was like the main event, which most people wanted to see. So, and that was going to be the first thing, and I, I'm assuming what happened was is Abrams came in first thing Thursday morning, did that panel at 10 o'clock, I mean 10 o'clock in the morning, and then as soon as that panel was over, then he flies out, he leaves. That's what I'm assuming how it was, the reason why it was set up. So he didn't stay, I don't think Abrams stayed for the convention. Um, but anyway, what happened was, is people were lining up, they told people to come back at 6 o'clock because they were going to line up to camp out all night. They were going to start up, they were lining up, and then they were going to camp out all night just to get in, because otherwise there would be no spaces. Even though the main the main uh, theater, the main theater in the convention center, could hold uh, 7,000 people. That was just a drop in a bucket. You're talking about maybe 30, 40,000 people were there at this convention. So it was just a drop in the bucket compared to. So obviously, people who wanted to see, even even the people could because they had like several rooms uh, that they were going to um, broadcast it simultaneously, which they did. But even those rooms were filled up. So everybody got in line. 
camp out overnight to go to this thing. And um, I didn't do it at Celebration 5 to camp. I didn't camp out all night outside on the, on the sidewalk to see Lucas, and I was, certainly wasn't going to do it to see Kathleen Kennedy and J.J. Abrams. And I couldn't, and even if I wanted to, I couldn't justify it. I couldn't justify it because, number one, I wasn't feeling too well. And number two, about uh, 50 yards from me, from where I was standing, from the convention center, was a very luxurious hotel, which I paid a lot of money for to stay at. So I had a nice, comfortable bed, and I wasn't feeling too well, so there was no way I could justify standing in that line. So I said, forget it. I decided, I know I'm not going to be into that panel. I'm sure whatever information is, I'm going to get off other fans who've been into that panel. And easily enough, and sure enough, that morning when I woke up, I saw somebody had, because as soon as they unveiled the uh, trailer, the, te the second teaser trailer, they put it online, and I was able to see it online. So I really don't feel like I missed anything by not going to that panel. But anyway, let me move on. Now we're going to the um, first day of the convention, which is Thursday, April 16th. Uh, I get into the convention, I'm not feeling too well, and, uh, you know, allergies and everything, and I think even the virus was bothering me a lot. But, you know, I made that mis one of the things I made a mistake is I spent the first four hours uh, of the convention looking around at every exhibitor on the convention floor for a Baru Whiteson action figure. The reason is, is because when I was at Celebration 6, I got a, a Bonnie Peace was there. Bonnie Peace, who plays Bar the young Bar Aunt Baru, or Baru Whiteson, in Episodes 2 and Episode 3, she was there. She was there at Celebration 6, and she was there at this Celebration convention in Anaheim. Now, when I was there at Celebration 6, I waited till Saturday to get her autograph. And I was looking all around at all these exhibitors because I wanted to get an action figure, an, an Amperu action figure. Or the young Amperu, not just the regular one from episode 4, but the young Amperu. And they only have one that they actually made. But I thought with hundred, you know, dozens of exhibitors, and people selling thousands of action figures, I thought well, people can, I could find it. Well, I couldn't find it at Celebration 6, but I thought, well, maybe it was sold out because I waited to Saturday. So I said the genius thing to do is the first thing I'll do as soon as the convention opens is I'll go around to every exhibitor and somebody has to have it. Well, I spent four hours, and trust me, these were not, I was miserable. I started off the convention very miserable because I spent four hours looking for this action figure. And I was not in the best of mood, and I was not feeling too well because of the allergies and the virus bothering me. Uh, of course, only I was foolish enough to think that I, you know, it's almost like the, the old saying of insanity. What's the definition of doing something over and over again expecting a, diff a different result. And, uh, and I thought that if I could just keep going around to these different exhibitors, somebody would have a brewer action figure. But believe it or not, nobody had it. And, 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 I, and I searched, first, first thing I did before I went to any panels, before I did anything, that was the first thing I did is I went around to all the exhibitors that were selling Star Wars action figures and I asked them if they had a, a, a Baru Whites and nobody had one. Believe it or not, I guess it was that rare. Nobody had one. So I, le I learned, uh, I got very frustrated because, see, I had Bonnie Peace's autograph on a regular photo. But this time around, I want to actually get her, her to sign the action figure. So after four hours of looking for this action figure, I gave up the ghost and said, I'm just not going to see her this time around and, and get her to sign an uh, action figure. So I decided that next time around, that she's going to be at the next Celebration Convention, or anybody who I want to get their autograph, an action figure, I decided I'll get it off eBay first. I, I mean, usually I thought about that for this convention, but my attitude was uh, the less I have to bring, the better. Bring with me, the better. But I've learned my lesson that I thought that I could find a copy, one, one action, you know, the action figure of Brewer Whiteson. Um, and I couldn't find it. None of the exhibitors on the convention floor had it. Frustrated the heck out of me. And it d didn't start off the convention that well. That was like a bad omen. <laughs> but anyway, what I decided to do is just for next, the next convention is to get it off eBay before I go and then take, the, take it with me. I'm going to have to do that because I've learned my lesson from the last two conventions that uh, I can't just trust 
that somebody on the convention floor will have it for it to sell it to me. But anyway, to go on, the first panel that I went to was called The Untold Clone Wars. That was the title of the first panel, The Untold Clone Wars. And that was with uh, Dave Filoni and Pablo uh, Hidalgo. And what The Untold Clone Wars did, it was very, it was very fascinating. Because ironically, Thursday, the panels on Thursday were some of the best, which I'll get into. I didn't start off that day with the uh, you know, I didn't start off the convention that day the best, but actually the panels that I went to later in the day on Thursday turned out to be the best panels, the most favorable panels that I went to for the, for Celebration in Anaheim. So, but the Untold Clone Wars was very pleasant, and it kind of made you, it kind of made you frustrated with Disney because, as everybody knows, as soon as Disney took over in the acquisition, took over Lucasfilm. First thing they did is they canceled after five seasons. They canceled the the Clone Wars. Now I'm glad that we got that additional six season or half half of C, season six with the um, the Lost Miss Missions. So I'm glad I can count that we can actually say that we have six seasons. But even though we, even in spite of the fact that we have six seasons, the one thing I learned from this panel is we still had one or two more seasons to go for Dave Filoni to to tell the entire story of the Clone Wars and to wrap everything up. The first thing he revealed at this panel was that the Clone Wars, in addition to having one or two more seasons, he was planning to take the story before he wrapped it, before he took bring everything full circle and wrap tied up all the loose ends to end the series. He was going to take the series past episode, the events of Episode Three, Revenge of the Sith, so he could tell the stories of all the main characters, Ahsoka Tano and you know Captain Rex. Etc. Etc. All the main characters of the Clone Wars. I mean, we know what happened to Yoda and Obi Wan, and you know, we know all the fates of the main characters from the prequel trilogy after Episode Three, but we don't know all the fates of the characters from the Clone Wars series. So he was going to wrap the series up of what was happening post Episode Three, Revenge of the Sith, and to explain the storylines of what happened what was the fate of all the main characters after order 66 which is you know for everyone our old star wars fans know is the uh, great jedi purge and learning that was very frustrating because it made you feel that the clone wars was canceled before um its time was up you know everybody i mean i've seen so many even fans out there so many people saying it's time to move on you know from the clone wars it's time to move on People don't realize that, of course, somebody who's a hardcore Clone Wars fan like I am is it's it's almost like what, what Disney did is even though you know I, you know I have to look at it from the perspective of the glass is you know the glass is half empty or half full you know I'm trying to look at it from the perspective of a positive perspective the glass the glass is half full because we do have the six seasons which I'm very appreciative of but even in spite of that. There is still, it's almost like watching half a movie and then they cut off the Disney cuts, cuts you off halfway through the movie and says, okay, time to go home. It's time to move on. I sort of feel like they did that too. But, you know, I, I'm still trying to look at it. At least I have six seasons of The Clone Wars and I'm appreciative of that. But there were so many stories, and, and so many story arcs that they were, um, uh, that, that they had to tell that they Disney did not allow them to finish. And, you know, even another year would have given them that. But Disney, uh, being the tyrants that they are, decided to cut the Clone Wars off right there it was. Because I really think they don't want, they didn't want to own something that wasn't theirs. Clone Wars wasn't theirs. Rebels might be theirs, but Clone Wars isn't. And that was very frustrating. And one of the things is, and this is, this really, it almost made me jump out of my seat when I found it. One of the stories that they were going to have that, they, that, that they've never got around to telling... They were going to have um, a story with the Yuuzhan Vong in it. And it was going to have, it was sort of like the X-Files meets Star Wars. Where the Yuuzhan Vong are secretly in the Star Wars galaxy. And they were kidnapping people. You know, sort of like what you hear with the UFO stories. They kidnap people and they do medical experiments on them. It was sort of like that. They were secretly in the Star Wars galaxy during the time of the Clone Wars. But they weren't involved, obviously, 
it, the invasion wasn't there until, you know, obviously the New Jedi Order of the EU. Um, but they were kidnapping people to see the strength, test the strength of the, uh, the, of the Republic to see what the Republic's all about and how strong they are. But they've never got to tell that story and that just, that's one of the most disappointing things. I almost <laughs> fell out of my seat when I found out that there was supposed to be a storyline with the Yu Zan Vong in it. Um, but anyway, I found out those kind of storylines and it was a very good panel. Um, and Dave seemed to be very humble because a lot of people there was a lot of people at that panel that stood up and said, I love the Clone Wars, and I feel like Disney just betrayed us by canceling it. And they, you know, they expressed exactly what I was feeling. And they said, can we get more Clone Wars? And Dave was very apologetic and said, you know, Disney's essentially not going to let him go in that direction, unfortunately. Um, which is disappointing. But that was, that was what the Untold Clone Wars panel was all about. The next panel that I went to, and this was the last panel for the day, was called The Hero's Journey and the power of myth and that was probably one of my most favorite panels that I went to I love that panel uh, number one the guy loves all things Star Wars you can tell he's really the guy who I'm trying to forget the guy's name I have got his information and I need to contact him sometime because I told him that after the conventions over I did want to contact him which I, which I haven't done <laughs> ironically yet but I plan to get around to doing all that but he's so brilliant I mean, he lo you can tell he loves all things Star Wars. He's a very passionate fan of the prequels, like I am. And what the theme of this panel was about is, um, the clue should be, the hero's journey. And it was about Joseph Campbell. If you know Joseph Campbell, Joseph Campbell uh, was a philosopher who came up with the idea of, um, in the human, you know, following Carl Jung's uh, psychology, he talked about the collective consciousness of humanity. And how all the stories in mythology, whether it be the ancient Greek mythology or the gods like Zeus and Apollo and, you know, all those ancient, uh, or um, uh, Hercules or or, or, or or Troy, the city, you know, the stories of Troy, you know, from ancient Greece, or the more modern mythologies that you see in fantasy and science fiction, like... Um, Lord of the Rings and Star Wars. Basically, he says they're general themes, even though they're different stories, different characters, different settings. You know, whether it be a mytho mythological world or science fiction world in outer space or, or or ancient mythology of Greece or whatever. He says those are the different settings, but they all have a very similar theme, like the hero's theme. There's a, there's a general theme of the hero's journey in the sense that you got a young person who is predestined for greatness but he but he doesn't he's not born into greatness he's not born with great wealth or uh, realizing his great destiny he sort of just has a humble humble living a humble beginning and then when greatness is thrust onto him his journey is thrust onto him he doesn't want to uh, he doesn't want to embrace it he, you know he's comfortable in the humble lifestyle that he has and then he has to make that choice which he does make that choice to embrace his destiny in which he becomes the hero of the story, the savior of the story, and and you see this, you you, you see this with the, you know just like Frodo, you know in Lord of the Rings when he says, "I wish the ring had never come to me," and Gandalf says, "So do all people wish that, but we don't have that decision. You know that decision has been thrust upon you. All you have is a decision. What do you do now?" what the responsibility has been given to you. And we see that with Anakin. Of course, we know that Anakin in, in the prequels, he had fallen from grace. But we see Luke and Leia, they're the redemption, that Luke had that simple, humble beginnings. You know, Luke uh, was a farm boy, you know, raised by uh, his aunt and uncle, Baru, uh, aunt, uh, Owen and Baru. Uh, and he had that humble, but uh, when Obi-Wan came into his life and all about the Jedi, you know, that, that thing, and he didn't want anything to do with it, and of course Obi-Wan said, we must all do what, was, what we feel is right, you know, he wasn't forcing this on him, but Luke eventually embraced his destiny and redeemed his father, and that's what brought his father back from the dark side. So these are the themes that he talked about, which was just fascinating, because that's the kind of stuff that's right up my alley, and the, you know, the hero's journey and the power of myth, and he did an excellent job 
at explaining the connections between the prequel trilogy with the original trilogy, and even uh, showed how Jar Jar is something, you know, as, as a character that's not really well liked, and especially not liked by all the prequel haters, all the fanboys who hate the prequels. He did such a great job at showing the interconnectionness, even with Jar Jar, and how, how that plays in with the whole mythology of Star Wars, that he was able, he was able to convert some of the most ardent uh, anti-prequel people that were there, the fanboys who said, because there was one guy who got up and he says, I hate, I used to hate the prequels and I hate the prequels and this and that, one of those fanboys. But he says, after listening to your thing, I want to revisit the prequels because I think he was saying that he convinced them that there is actual, real, good substance to the prequels. And that just it blew me away how he was able to do that. That's why I introduced myself after, after the panel was over and and uh, talked to him and got to know him. It was just very enjoyable talking to him. It was probably the most enjoyable panel that I went to uh, through that whole convention. But anyway, that ends Thursday, April 16th, day of convention. Keep in mind, I, 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 which I will talk about in a minute, um, you probably wonder why didn't I go to a lot more panels. Well, I would, but it's very hard because there's so many, I mean, like I said, the thousands and thousands of people that sometimes you have to get there in line for two hours ahead of time for each of these panels. For for lesser, for the lesser, less popular ones, maybe a two hours ahead of time you have to get. For the more popular ones, like I said, that they panel with J.J. Abrams, you have to camp out all night. So some of these conventions, some of these panels are just out of control when it comes to uh, the amount of people that get in line, and then and you get them start getting in line and waiting, and then you find out some while in that hey, you know, it's over capacity and you get cut off from going to a panel. So, you, you know, usually I try to shoot for uh, two a day, at least one, when I go to these conventions because I know that that's all I probably will have, have the ability to uh, make. Uh, but anyway, let's go on. The second day of the convention, Friday, April 17th, the second day of the convention. The first panel that I went to was on Star Wars The Clone Wars. It was called Star Wars The Clone Wars uh, Bad Batch. Yeah, and that was the theme. There was about four episodes. Now keep in mind, this is going back, relating back to the original panel that I went to on the Untold Star Clone Wars. And like I said, that Dave, there were so many stories that Dave had, that there were so many stories that they were working on. Now fortunately we, we got, which I am thankful for, don't want to, you know, what's that old expression, gift, gift or horse in the mouth, be ungrateful. I am very grateful that we did get the uh, 13 episodes of the uh, Lost Missions. So I don't want to be ungrateful for that because at least I have that. But there was a lot of episodes, I found out, there was a lot of episodes and story arcs for Season 6 that were made and they were 99% completed. The only thing that was left was then for them to send those episodes to the animators so they can flesh out um, the actual video, the actual characters in the video and stuff like that. But 99, but 99 percent of the episodes were made, but never, never let uh, Disney never let Dave or the team finish those episodes. One of that was the story arc called the Bad Batch, and it was about four episodes. And what the story theme was about is that the, the clone troopers, like Captain Rex and some of the others, they met a group of other clone troopers, a unique unit of clone troopers. They were known as the Bad Batch, and the reason why they were called the Bad Batch is because something wasn't right in their cloning, how they were cloned, and uh, the natures of these clones. But they were still being used by the Republic for these special ops missions and stuff like that. And it was a very interesting series. Now, unfortunately, I was feeling it, it, it was terrible because I loved that panel. But I only stayed for one of the episodes. I wanted to stay for one of the episodes. I wasn't feeling too well because that's when my virus was really kicking in and I was I was feeling like total crap when it came to being sick, feeling sick. And I didn't feel too well. And uh, also, and I, I wanted to stay for the, the whole thing. But other than feeling, not feeling too well. Uh, for the Force book, which I'm a member of, we had our group, a small group uh, 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 from our members, that came there and, and we met. Uh, we met. We met at a uh, at a, a little restaurant on Thursday night, and we wanted to have a group picture taken outside the front of the convention center, the waterfall near the convention 
uh, center. And that's when they, it was during that time of that panel. They sent me a text message before the second episode began, and I wanted to get together with them and do, uh, it was important for me to get together and do a group picture with them. So I only stayed for part of that panel, but I did really enjoy it from what I saw of it. And of course it was a screening and a discussion panel with Dave Filoni. I mean, I, I, they had a little bit of a discussion before they began uh, playing those episodes, but I'm sure they discussed a little bit more after, but I wasn't there at that point. I had left uh, the panel. Um, now the next, the, the next one that I went to was probably the worst, the most dreadful uh, panel that I went to. This is just as the hero's journey was my favorite, which I was thrilled and I got a lot out of. The, 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 this panel, which I'm about to discuss, was the worst panel, the most dreadful. Uh, that I, and I, and I kind of knew it going into it. And let, let, me, let me explain why. This was called One Big Story, subtitled Working Within Star Wars Canon. Uh, I'll repeat this. The panel was called One Big Story, subtitled Working Within the Star Wars Canon. And as you may guess, it's about the big controversy over the Star Wars Expanded Universe, which Disney decanonized and placed in their Legends banner, and really disenfranchised all the fans, especially the fans of the, of the EU. And uh, it was about, that panel was about that, that, that um, dealing with that controversy, dealing with that issue. And I went to it. And I guess partially I should have uh, known what I was getting into because it wasn't going to be a fair conversation between panelists and fans having different ideas and having different opinions. It was going to be pretty much the panel was going to be filled with people who are pro Disney. It, it was you know it was going to be propaganda for Disney. Uh, Why you know the. the Getting rid of the EU legends is canon is good. Re, 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 rebooting the can, rebooting the EU with our novels, Disney's novels is good. You know it's going to be propaganda for that. I should have realized going into it, but I didn't realize how bad it was going to be, and uh, it was uh, very upsetting. The, the the panel was made up of the story group. Most of you who if, have been following behind the scenes politics with the the whole Disney thing with Lucasfilm. As Kathleen Kennedy created after they decanonized EU in the Legends banner, they Kathleen Kennedy decided to create a story group, a group of people working within Lucasfilm under Disney, who was supposedly going to decide what original purpose was to decide what was canon and what was not from the EU to solidify the can canonicity of the entire Star Wars universe. That was the original purpose, but then they decided, well, let's just decanonize everything, let's get rid of everything, and then restart over. And that's what created the major problems and the controversy over the whole thing. That's the story group panel. Two of the people I'm going to mention is uh, Leland Chi. He is, he is known uh, as the keeper of the holocron under Lucasfilm when he was look, working for Lucas, Lucasfilm when George, George Lucas owned Lucasfilm. But he was known as, uh, Leland Chi was known as Keeper of the Holocron, and the reason why is because he was the spokesperson, main spokesperson for the EU. Uh, and was a great defender of the EU, saying that even though that George wasn't beholden to the EU, it still played, it, it, it was still, even in George's mind, still was respected by George, and still held a high place in canonicity of the Star Wars universe. And I find that ironic compared to what I'm about to share with you, what he, how he turned on that. Uh, but that's why he was known as the Keeper of the Holocron, because he was the spokesperson for Lucasfilm on such issues as canonicity of Star Wars. The other one is the uh, Star Wars author Pablo Hidalgo. And um, basically, uh, uh, what they, they, those are two, those are two that um, make up those are two of the main ones that make up the panel, but the panel, story group panel was the one who did the story group of, uh, that uh, Kathleen Kennedy put together was the one who did this panel on the on the, the you know the one big the one you know one big story you know working within Star Wars canon they that, they were the ones who did this panel and pretty much unfortunately it was straight down propaganda for Disney 
uh, it was not a very intellectual, um, stimulating uh, conversation and throwing off different ideas and stuff like that. It was pretty much them. It was pretty much, and this is the reason why I felt it was very disappointing, is because it was it was them pretty much spitting out uh, Disney's propaganda, uh, them defending it, and it, it was sort of like, you know, what you would get like propaganda. This is the reason why we did it. You've got to accept it. If you don't like it, that's too bad. And uh, this, and and we think it's good. And if you don't like it, that's just too bad. You know, this is this is it. You know, love it or leave it, kind of, kind of thing. Which was a very disappointing, especially coming from from Leland Chi and Pablo Hidalgo. And they came, and the thing is, it's very disappointing because there were so many fans who were very critical of Disney who said that Disney did the wrong thing by decanonizing the EU, they disenfranchised them because of the history, and they pers- and a lot of, there was a lot of fans that stood up to try to defend the EU, and they didn't want it. They didn't want to hear, they didn't want to hear any of those arguments. They said, look, you're wrong, we think it's good, you need to accept it, this is the direction it's going in, you know, so shut up and love it, you know. And I didn't like that attitude. I did not like that attitude because they, you know, a lot of the fans felt the same what I did, that, that taking out the EU uh, and trying to reboot it with their own stuff, first of all, their own reboot of EU, uh, you know, the, 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 um, Dawn, uh, what's it, the, uh, uh, um, Heir to the Jedi, Heir to the Jedi, Tarkin, uh, A New Dawn, which is the, the prequel for the Rebel series, are really just flat novels. They're really, they're very flat to begin with. Um, they're not as masterful. I mean, none of what Disney has created so far, and I doubt very highly anything that they will ever create, is going to even match anywhere close to the ma- some of the masterpieces, like the Throne Trilogy by Timothy Zahn. Um, but yet, that's what they were defending. And the fans, when they were defending the EU, uh, they, gave, they said, you know, over 20, 25, 30 years of history, of Star Wars history, now you've just canceled. Stuff that we've been following, and they didn't care. They acted, especially, especially Lin Chi and Pablo Duggar, it was very disappointing, because knowing what they said on the Wikipedia site, and what their position was before, before the acquisition took place on the EU and Star Wars canon, to hear them not only just defending Disney's propaganda, but actually getting arrogant, actually, you know, it was sort of like a, um, they were getting frustrated with the fans and the response was not respect. At least, at least um, Dave Filoni had a little bit of humble apologies with the fans. These guys, um, Chi and Hildago, um, they, they, they got arrogant. They got arrogant. They, they, you know, like one fan got up. And said, you know, to me, why can't we have a mixture? Maybe I'm going to consider uh, this portion of the EU as canon or whatever. And and I, I didn't see who it was about. I think it was Pablo Hidalgo who said, came up very arrogant and said, I don't care. What, essentially, I, I'm paraphrasing, but I don't care what you think is canon. I'm telling you, this is the way it is. And everyone needs to accept it. And I was very disappointed in how they acted with the fans because a lot of fans were felt disenfranchised and they wanted to address some of these issues. They weren't this the story group. And, and keep in mind, keep story group. First of all, blamed it. They tried to say this was a decision by, and I th- kind of felt it was disingenuous. They said this was a decision by Kathleen Kennedy. They tried to throw it all on Kathleen Kennedy. That she now, granted, she's the one. Who started the uh, story group panel? Uh, I'll admit that, but I don't think it was all her. I mean, I, I have my issues with her, but I don't think it was all her. I think they were being very disingenuous because I think ultimately this goes all the way up to the top. This goes all the way up to uh, uh, Bob Iger and Disney. They didn't want just like with the Clone Wars. They didn't want to own anything. It was sort of like they wanted to wipe the slate clean, which is what, unfortunate, these American corporations want to do. Wipe the slate clean, start over, and claim it's theirs. That's the reason why they got rid of the EU. And plus, they don't want to pay 
the EU authors, Timothy Zahn, Kevin J. Anderson, or anybody else. They don't want to pay them royalties. But they didn't mention that. Of course they didn't want to mention that. Essentially, they didn't want to address any of the... Uh, the thing that was very disappointing is that Leland Chi, Pablo Hidalgo, they did, and the rest of the story group did not want to... Uh, on this panel, they did not want to um, address... Humbly address some of the concerns by the fans. What they wanted to do is they wanted to present uh, Disney's. Uh, they wanted to present uh, Disney's uh, propaganda and force that down in everyone's throat, and and they wanted everybody just to accept it without question. They, they didn't want anybody to challenge. They didn't want anybody to have disagreements. They wanted to say, okay, everybody just be a yes man. They, you're right. They, they, it's great. And they acted like, you know, and it's amazing how Leland Chi used to defend the EU. Now he's saying, oh, it's, it's great that it's going. And, and this is the kind of ridiculous arguments that came up. They talked about, um, you would think that the way they treated the EU, like they said, you know, oh, it's a continuity mess. There's all these continuity contradictions and stuff like that. You would think that the EU has stuff like in it like uh uh they're presenting luke skywalker wasn't really the the son of darth vader wasn't anakin's son or some major continuity mess like that none of the sort there's none of the sort of like that in the eu they were pointing out ridiculous stupid arguments like well it presents in the eu that the huts hermaphrodites and for those of you who don't know what hermaphrodite is it means having characteristics both of the male and female gender and they saying, well, it's clearly seen from the movies and also the Clone Wars series that the, uh, the Huts do take on distinct uh, genders, male or female. And, you know, the, it's so simple, I think even a kindergarten student can uh, answer that. If, you know, can, you know some, somebody simple can even answer that. That, that they can both, both statements can be true, that both uh, Huts can be hermaphrodites and also... In their individual being, they can take on a predominant uh, gender, whether it be male or female. That's very easy. But those are the kind of excuses. Those are kind of discrepancies. Oh, those kind of discrepancies uh, are in there, and there's no way to solve them. So it's just the only thing you could do is sort of like wipe. The, you know, it's so it's so terrible. The continuity mess is so terrible. The only thing you can do is set a nuke to it, and blow it up, destroy it completely, and start over, which is ridiculous. Absolutely ridiculous. And the, the, the examples that they gave were such examples, ridiculous examples, as um, the, the huts, the huts being hermaphrodites, which is so ridiculous. Like I said, the continuity stuff that they talk with is so minor and so insignificant, uh, you know, with the way they presented it, it was something big, but really everything, that, all, the, all the excuses, all the uh, examples they gave were ridiculous. And they were saying, well, because of these things, we just got to get rid of the EU and start over. Ridiculous. And, and, and it's here, Leland Chi and Pablo Hidalgo, especially Chi, who was the keeper of the holocron, say these things. This was flabbergasted. I was just like, my mouth just dropped. You ever see a cartoon where the guy's mouth just drops to the floor? Well, that was my mouth. I couldn't believe what I was hearing, especially from Chi and Hidalgo. And the, and the arrogance and dismissiveness of the fans. It's almost like they just wanted to shove the Disney's propaganda down their throat and force them to accept it. And because they didn't, they had problems. Now, after the convention, after the panel was over, excuse me, after the panel was over, I wanted to privately talk to talk to them. Primarily, Leland Chi. I was going to, I tried to do it. Pablo Doggo, he was talking to some other people, but I went over to Leland Chi, and he was signing autographs. Uh, for a few people. Then he came to me and he noticed that I didn't have an autograph to sign. And I think probably what that told him, because I didn't have an autograph to sign, I just wanted to have a word with him. Uh, he took one look at me, did a 180, and got out of there as fast as he could. Because he didn't, I mean, and I wasn't going to tear him apart. You know, I wasn't going to, you know, you know <laughs> curse him out or anything like that. But I just wanted to say, how could you say these things when you clearly in the past uh, which is documented on the Wikipedia site, how could you say these things and be so arrogant about it? I mean, the, the EU know the EU has value. And uh, I wanted to question him, call him out on that, in a polite way, not a mean way, but I still wanted to question But he didn't want to, he didn't want to talk to me. 
He did not want to, I think he noticed it because I wasn't there get, just getting an autograph and saying thank you, thank you, thank you. I was there, you know, he knew I was there to, he probably put two and two together and say, hey, this guy, <laughs> this guy doesn't want to, uh, uh, ch this guy doesn't want just an autograph and say thank you and be gone. He wants to chit chat with me over these issues. He's probably going to confront me about the EU because he's an EU fan. Uh, I don't want to deal with it. So he just, I just saw him do it. He looked at me and just did a 180 and got out of there as fast as he could. And I was so disappointed because every other panel, I was able to talk to the people who ran the panel. They were willing to talk to me for a couple minutes after the panel was over. He was not. And neither was Pablo. Of course, Pablo Dog, I'll, I'll give a pass because he was talking with other people. But Lilin Chi wasn't. And he got out of there as fast as he could didn't even bother talking with me and I was very disappointed in, in that and ironically there was a couple of guys young guys millennials what I refer to them as behind me and they said oh it's so awesome to be Leland Chi he's like the keeper of the hologram I was so frustrated at this point I turned around to him I said don't you mean he's the betrayer of the holo uh, the holocron and they looked at me very irate like uh, you know I put some put one of their heroes down he said, oh no, we, we, the EU was never considered canon. I said, obviously, you don't know what you're talking about. You need to go to Wikipedia. You need to do some research about the position with the EU was. How the, how the, you know, this, this idea that the, that, that the EU was always some fanzine thing that nobody ever took serious, definitely wrong. And I, I, you need to do some research before you talk. Because I know, I, I know a little something about the EU. Um, and guarantee it's not it's not what you, they're presenting it as. But anyway, as disappointing as that was, let me let me move on. Um, third day of the that was the last the, the panel that I went to. And again, of course, I said third you know Friday night I wasn't feeling too good. Um, but third day of the convention, Saturday, April eighteenth. The panel that I went to, the first, this is the only panel that I made it, and I'll tell you, the other panel I tried to go to, but I couldn't get in. But the panel that I made it, and I, and I waited in line for quite a while to see this. The it's, it's title of it's called New Allies and New Villains. Subtitled Star Wars Rebel Season, Re, uh, Star Wars Rebel Season 2. Excuse me. New Allies, New Villains. Subtitled Star Wars Rebels Season 2. And basically, I went to that because of the title. I thought what it was going to be is that we're going to get in discussion of reviewing. Because if you've seen my review for Rebels Season 1, you know that I was very disappointed. But you also know, too, that I'm giving Season 2 a chance. I'm hanging in there for Season 2 just in case it pulls around. Because I think it's very subpar of where Clone Wars was. But... I don't want to be one of those fanboys who just spits hate. I want to give. I want to give everything, even the stuff that Disney is as angry as I am and as disgusted as I am how Disney is treating the franchise. I'm still giving, trying to give, you know, Episode Seven, The Force Awakens, and Rebels every single chance that I can that I can before I decide I'm giving up the ghost. So I'm giving Rebels season two. So I thought going to this panel would be good because I'm going to get some clues on. Where is season two of Rebels going? Maybe they're going to talk about characters and 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 uh, new villains and new storylines. Give us now. We did see the, the which was interesting. Did see the uh, trailer at this panel for season two of Rebels, which was neat. But I also thought that Rebel season one trailer was neat prior to seeing seeing season one. So I don't know if that says too much about the trailer seeing season two as a trailer. I'm just going to have to wait till the season begins. Um, but anyway. Going to the panel was anything but uh, a preview, and it, it was really good. Instead of feeling being at a Star Wars convention, being at a good panel to get some insight about where Star Wars Rebels is going, which I got when I was at Celebration 5 and 6 and was getting previews, when goes going to the Clone Wars panels, getting previews for the upcoming season of the Clone Wars, it was a little bit more of what I expected, like, what kind of new things are going to be happening? Where, what, what direction is this season of the Clone Wars going into? That's what I was hoping for for Rebels. What direction is Rebels going into for this season? And I didn't get anything in the panel. I felt like it was on a reality show. They, they parade. They, what they did is they paraded all the uh, the the, the, the um, voice actors for the, the Rebels out, and then started asking 
quick questions like, "How long have you been a Star? Wars? How, what would you classify yourself as a Star Wars fan?" What, you know, and you know, and then parading their, their star, which is Freddie Prince Jr. You know, that should be a sign. Why would they get Freddie Prince Jr. Uh, to do something like Star Wars? And then you had, and then it was very nauseating seeing some of the fan. It, it was so, like you had, you had instances where you had a woman that screams out, you know, when it came time for questions and answers. A woman says, "I left my children so I could marry you," and then she ran down to get a special autograph from me. I felt like I was in. I felt like I was on American Idol rather than at a Star Wars convention. So what the heck is going on? It's very nauseating being at that panel. I was very disappointed. Other than seeing the the trailer, which was pretty cool. I was very disappointed in that panel because I got no insight other than maybe a couple characters. Well, it's going to see uh, Ahsoka Tano, which is cool, and Captain Rex. He's going to come back, which was cool. But other than that, I didn't get anything out of that panel other than a parade of the voice actors. It was very disappointing. But the other panel that I tried to go to later in the day, on, on Saturday, was called... Um, uh, Embrace the, it was called Embrace the Dark Side, The Nature of Evil, and Villains in the Star Wars Universe. That looked like an awesome panel because it, it looked like it was more like an intellectual thing on Star Wars mythology, just like the, uh, just like the one I went to on uh, the hero's journey and the power of myth. I thought, you know, very similar. It was going to get into the, the story and the mythology and concepts of, of nature, good and evil in Star Wars Universe. I thought it was going to be one of those kind of panels. But unfortunately, I didn't get there on time. I was, you know, I got there about, what, an hour, an hour and a half. I thought that was enough time because I didn't, I didn't think it was one of those popular panels which was going to be filled, you know. It was, uh, so I thought I had enough time to get there, enough time with an hour and a half. Well, it wasn't. I got there in line and found out not too long that they were over capacity and uh, I got cut out. Very disappointing. No, and that, that happened. That I mean, I mean, I'm mentioning that with this panel, but that it happened a lot there at the convention. It happened a lot at the other conventions, especially Celebration Six. It happened at this in Celebration Anaheim. Uh, but that was one particular panel that I really wanted to go to. That I was, I uh, miscalculated how much time I should give to stand to get in line, and I got cut out because of overcapacity of the of the. Um, of how many people were attending this thing, and uh, you know, but just keep in mind these conventions. You, you have 40,000 people. Uh, it, it just it very quickly these panels get uh, filled to capacity uh, very fast. But anyway, uh, I decided. You know, and ironically, keep in mind after after I got uh, after I got cut out of that panel. Uh, I tried to go over to um, uh, the uh, what do you call it? They had a they had a um, sort of like not a museum, uh, but an exhibit for all the stuff for Episode Seven. And I tried to go over there because I thought it would just be a casual, just walk through, just like you would do at a museum, just walk through, take a look. But even that was cut off because he had people waiting hours and hours in line for that. And they said if I got in line, there's no way I would make it in before closing. So that was disappointing. So like I said, I got cut out from a lot of panels because of over overcapacity. So I decided, you know, giving up the ghost for that night. I wasn't feeling still, you know, cold was still bothering me. So I went back early that night, decided I'm going to get a full night's rest. You know, go back early, which I did. And that, that was very helpful for that night. I went back, went to bed, uh, got in bed for about... Eight, nine, just slept the whole night, and that, that was very helpful for my health. But the fourth and last day of the convention, Sunday the 19th, I only went to one panel. Was the only, of course, Sundays for convention, this has always been, doesn't matter what convention it is, Sundays always tend to be a slower day, so they don't have as many events going on. But I only made it to one panel, um, and that panel was called, it was titled From a Certain Point of View uh, by and it was with uh, Trisha, Trisha Barr. And Trisha Barr was one of the authors who wrote a new new book on um, the uh, visual guide uh, to Star Wars universe. And it was a new book. I'm trying to remember the exact title, but I got it signed by a couple of authors, like multi-authors who did this book. And I got it signed 
there that day by a couple of the authors, not by her because she was doing the panel, but I d left my book with uh, the DK Publishing Company and they got they were kind enough to get me the autograph while I was attending the panel. While I was attending the panel, she was leading the panel along with a group of other people. And it was fair. I wouldn't say I was disappointed in it, especially I wasn't disappointed in it like the, well, I was for the Rebels season two panel or and especially how i was, got upset and very disgusted with the uh the uh one big story the star wars eu canon panel um i wasn't as upset as i was with these other two panels so it was a fair panel not great not anything close as uh, not anything close as how great the uh um my original the original uh the uh, uh the hero's journey panel was but it wasn't as bad as the uh, the canon the, the the Star Wars canon panel and the Rebels two panel was. It was fair, but there were some things that were said. It basically let me give a let me give a background. The, the what the panel was is basically giving certain concepts, certain things that that happened, or not happened, but certain things about the saga, and getting pe getting people's point of view. And I, uh, I had to interject a couple things during, uh, during, and I don't know how that went over with the, uh, the panel. They agreed with me or not, because they didn't make too much comment. And I thought it was important on the, on the concept of the nature of evil with the Sith. Um, but I'm not going to get into that now, because I'm not dealing with the mythology. I'm just talking about the panel. And, but, the, but essentially, they talked about different aspects and gave their opinions... Uh, different opinions, you know, like uh, strengths of the prequels or weakness of the prequels, strengths of the uh, original trilogy, weakness of the, you know, that kind of stuff, um, or different opinions on different mythological aspects, like uh, was Yoda wrong or right about, uh, was Obi Wan and Yoda wrong or right about keeping the secret of that uh, Anik, that Darth Vader was the father of Luke, was they were, were they right or wrong, you know, giving opinions like that. Which was interesting, was fair. But the, the one frustrating thing, and I didn't get the comment because this was the last thing that was dealt with, is the uh, concept that was brought up, the concept of the Metachlorians. Was Lucas right in adding that to the mythology, or did he? And, and basically the best opinions that came from that panel were, it doesn't bother me one way or the other. I wanted a little bit more than that because I think it added to the mythology. I think, I think it made it very robust. So... The best comments that were given by that panel, the, the most positive ones, were it doesn't bother me one way or the other. The other said, oh, it ruined it. It ruined the concept of the Force and this and that. And I didn't get the comment to make my comments because, like I said, it was at, at the end. I already made my comments. I didn't want to be rude and interfere, you know, try to just barge in. But um, I kind of felt that it, it was very underrated the way the, uh, the, the concept of the midichlorians were talked about. And um, uh, the you know, the, and how that was dealt with, and even though yes, yeah, so granted, I wasn't able to get my two cents in at that panel, but I did decide that will definitely be a topic for a future Star Wars mythology blog, which I will discuss the concept of the midichlorians. What what kind of relationship do they have with living beings, and also with the Force, the nature of the Force, and I will explain why I think that they actually add and contribute to the robust mythology of the Force within the Star Wars universe rather than this negative detracting like, oh, we brought science or we brought something that just demythologizes the Force and stuff like that, uh, which I definitely disagree with. So that will be a topic for a future blog sometime. I can't tell you when, but that will definitely be a topic that I will be bringing up in the future when I talk when I have a when I have Star Wars mythology blogs on the concept of the Force, so um, it'll be an issue that I will be dealing with in the future. But that was the only that was the only panel. You know, I got together with some of my friends, a couple of my friends from the Force book that day, which was nice, and I spent the last the last uh, half hour hour with them before the convention shut down for the day. And uh, essentially, I didn't get to any other panels, but that was it. That was that was essentially my experience and my assessment of um, Star Wars Star Wars Celebration Convention in Anaheim, California. That was the last. I mean, that was the only, like I said, that was the only panel. I did you know did a little bit of other shopping and spending time with my friends for the rest of the day. Didn't get to any other panels, 
uh, convention ended early in the day. Like I said, it was a slower day. And that was essentially uh, the end of it, or that was the, the, the conclusion of my, uh, of my time, of the, the Star Wars Celebration Convention in, in Anaheim, California. And that was the end. Uh, so um, essentially, when my friends went their own way, I just went back and I uh, went back to my hotel and rested and packed and got ready to leave. And the Monday morning, I left um, LAX. Uh, got on a plane, had a layover in Chicago, and then eventually at night got home to home to Philadelphia, back to Philadelphia, um, where I flew into. And essentially that concludes, that ends my entire trip to Anaheim, California, my trip to California, and um, my experience, my time and experience at Star Wars Celebration Convention in Anaheim and I think I've covered, I gave my assessment of the convention and all the panels that I went to and I think this will be a good place to uh, end this blog. Uh, hopefully you got a lot, you were able to get something out of it even though it's a month late. Uh, so hopefully I contributed to something that was beneficial to you. I thank you for watching this video. And like I said, I hope it was beneficial to you. Uh, I want to thank you for um, watching my video. And again, like I, I'm going to ask this like I do all times. If you like my video, please subscribe to my channel. So you'll get all the latest updates. So I ask, you know, I, I appreciate all my subscribers. I cherish all my subscribers. So I do encourage people to subscribe to my channel. Again, I apologize for putting this off a month later because even though um, this video was supposed to be my uh, uh, May blog, my May video, I'm going to have to push it off to June, but my next video for June will be Star Wars Mythology number two, Does Earth Exist in the Star Wars Universe? So that will, Lord willing, that will be my uh, video for the month of June. Um, but in, in that context, I do wish everybody a good, good day and may the Force be with you.